But I do want to say about something about this government's approach to licensing. One of the first decisions the government made was to transfer responsibility for licensing to the Home Office in order that action could be taken to ensure that alcohol-related crime and disorder can be reduced. On recent visits to Newquay, and I know you've heard from the Newquay Safe Partnership this morning, and also in the last fortnight to London's West End, I've been struck in particular by the resource implications of policing the late night economy. That's why we did introduce the introduction of a late night levy that would allow local authorities to charge a fee for, for late night licenses to pay for the costs of extra policing. But I have listened very carefully to the representations that have been made on this subject and am committed to ensuring that local authorities have the discretion to manage the late night levy in such a way so that responsible premises are not penalised. In addition to introducing the late night levy, we said that we would introduce a programme of reform around alcohol licensing to tackle the crime and antisocial behaviour that is often associated with binge drinking. And that we would also uh, announce proposals to ban below cost sales of alcohol. Now, we ran a consultation over the course of the summer, and can I assure you that I have considered very carefully the representations that have been made on the proposals outlined in that consultation. Whilst I'm not in a position to make any final announcements today as to which proposals will be taken forward, I have taken very careful notes of the very thoughtful and well-considered responses that we've received. I've also met recently with a number of trade and industry bodies, as well as the parliamentary groups that have an interest in this area, in order to listen to their views directly as well. But we're also concerned about sales to children. This government believes that selling alcohol to under 18s is unacceptable and will not tolerate premises that are found to be doing this persistently. I know that that is a view that is shared by, I'm sure, everybody in this room as well. It's right that tough penalties should exist for committing these offences. And it is for this reason that we plan to introduce legislation to double the fine for underage sales to £20,000 and to ensure that uh, shops or bars found persistently selling alcohol to children can be shut down permanently. Now, I know that responsible retailers don't sell alcohol to children. And I understand that it is sometimes difficult to judge the age of young people. That's why I am supportive of the Proof of Age Standard Scheme. Although supported by the Home Office and ACPO, it is administered by representatives of the alcohol trade and has enabled young people to be able to purchase age-restricted goods without having to produce their passport or driving license. I also know that schemes such as Challenge 25, developed by the industry, have been successful in preventing those underage from purchasing alcohol. And I would like to see a society where asking for and producing proof of age is expected when purchasing alcohol. But we're adamant that central government should no longer be the primary driver for reducing uh, alcohol and the problems of alcohol-related crime and antisocial behaviour in isolation. Local communities and local authorities should have a greater say in what happens in their local areas, and individuals should become increasingly responsible for their own actions. We therefore do intend to rebalance licensing to ensure that it reflects the needs and wishes of local communities, and that they are better served by local authorities, enforcement agencies, and the industry. I am determined to ensure that local communities are at the centre of decision making about the licensing regime they wish to have in their locality. It is not our intention to prescribe set solutions, but rather set the framework that allows flexibility of approach to tackling problems as and when they arise whilst ensuring that responsible businesses 
are not unnecessarily impacted or burdened. The government is well aware that the vast majority of licensed premises are well-run businesses that provide a valuable service to their local communities. It is not our intention to target responsible businesses. Measures will provide local communities with greater flexibility to focus on the small minority of irresponsible operators who continue to damage their communities by contributing to alcohol-related crime and disorder. The proposed changes should not be seen as part of a top-down approach to tackling alcohol-related harms by issuing directives from Whitehall, which perhaps has been the hallmark of the past. By rebalancing licensing, we will give local authorities and communities the flexibility to determine the local licensing landscape and effectively address problems as and when they arise, which was the original intention of the Licensing Act. Our aim is to enable, not mandate. Finally, I would like to end by saying that I firmly believe that joined up local problem solving schemes, as I've said, is embodied by the Community Alcohol Partnerships Best Bar None, Pub Watch, and many, many others should be applauded and encouraged. Indeed, I think that they are the really central uh, solution to so many of the problems that we see. Yeah, hi, Michael Kang here from Kurnia. Uh, I've got a couple of questions for you, really. You mentioned that in regards to the late night levy, uh, that you were going to um, leave it to licensed authorities, local authorities. Um, to not penalise responsible premises. Just wondered if you have actually worked out what the definition of a responsible premises is. I think there's been some talk of schemes uh, or premises that are part of best bar none uh, would be classed as responsible, but if there's not a best bar none scheme running in your town or city centre, does that then put them into the non-responsible and make them liable for a uh, late night levy? Um, I, I think you raised the important point about uh, exemptions and discounts, which is something that we flagged up in the consultation. As I say, I'm not here today to be able to announce final conclusions in relation to that. That will be coming shortly. But uh, you can rest assured that I understand that there needs to be flexibility, as I indicated, with the relevant schemes that I know operate up and down the country in terms of whether it be Best Bar None, Purple Flag, certain other schemes, whether it be a community outcome project that may have members or pub watch members that are there. And so it is not my intention to be prescriptive around that.